The magnificent Valdivy Estate hosted the second renewal of the Bloodstock South Africa Valdivy Yearling Sale on Sunday the 14th of February. Buyers and vendors were able to enjoy the surroundings of one of the Cape's most exquisite estate as some of the Cape's best bred yearlings were paraded in front of them. Beautiful setting with the mountains in the background. The buyers were very pleased. They could get some value. They all did their homework and they managed to get the horses that they wanted. I think this year was, there was a much better quality. But again, we saw that there was no money in the middle and lower market. The top guys have got the money to spend, but other than that, it's very, very difficult. How do you feel about the, the, the average quality of the, the horse on the sale? I think it was, it was markedly better than last year. Um, the top lot was 1.5 million and I think it was, uh, it was very popular with a lot, of, a lot of buyers. However, the sales overall results were down with an aggregate dropping by 40%. Both average and medium prices fell markedly as well, with the average falling by 28%. Not for the first time, the progeny of leading sire Var proved popular with buyers and it was the son of Forest Wildcat who duly topped the 2016 Valdivy yearling sale. Catalogued as Lot 9, the colt was consigned by Phosphantine Stud as agent and has been named Varlocity, a half-brother to the ill-fated Grade 1 Golden Horseshoe winner War Horse and Grade 2 Supreme Cup winner Deputy Judd, Velocity was bought by the latter's owner, Adrian van Furen, for 1.5 million rand and will be trained by Michael Azzi. Obviously a little bit of pressure bidding for the horse that was eventually sold for 1.5 million. Were you happy with that buy? Yeah, you know, we came out to look at him because obviously because of Deputy Judd back home. And when I looked at him, I liked him. He was a decent horse. And I got onto Adrian straight away and I said, yep, this chap's all right. We had him vetted and everything was okay. And we went ahead and bought him. Were you happy with the other yearlings you purchased? Yes, you know, I bought a uh, chud pot earlier. We have the sister at home by Blackman and Lush, but I think this chud pot was nicer. Lot 5, we paid 100 for him. And then I think we bought horse. I was, I was waiting for the police to come and arrest me from Jessica for 20,000. I couldn't believe it. It was a very immature horse, big, long, lanky horse. But I tell you what, in six months' time, it's going to be an, I think it's going to be a smart horse. So just given the time, it'll be a decent horse. Velocity is the most expensive yearling yet sold at a Valdivy sale, with his prize setting a new record for the sale. Phosphantine also consigned the top filly, a Captain L daughter named Princess Peach, a full sister to listed East Cape nursery winner Princess Alberta, catalogued as Lot 11, was sold to Glen Cotson for 700,000 Rand. I think I bought the filly of the sale, please God, we all think that, but um, a lovely Captain L filly from Phosphantine. Um, yeah, so really happy with that. Um, we've got some, yeah, we bought Colts, Phillies right across the board. Um, it's been a lot, lot easier to buy them than it was at the previous sale, I promise you. Adrian van Furen's Misty Meadows operation topped the buyers list, with Misty Meadows acquiring three lots for a total of 1.6 million, while Cape trainers Glenn Cotson and Mike Bass also enjoyed notable sales. Glenn picked up six yearlings, with his tally including the top priced filly, while the best buys, including six lots, for 550,000 Rand, including a half-brother to the yard's very promising two-year-old, Bombs Away. Yeah, the, the, it was tough for the breeders, I suppose, but there were some, there were some very nice horses that sold well, and, um, you know, you have to do your homework. There's a, obviously, the, you can pick them out and, and get a nice horse, yeah. Were you happy with all the horses that you purchased? I like horses, yeah, I've got a bunch, I've got a, I've got a few and, and I think we did well. Well, I was, uh, managed to uh, purchase two, uh, two horses today, a lovely Ideal World filly and a, and a very nice um, Tiger Reach colt, so I was happy about that. We bought a Vark colt, I thought he was a, a really nice horse, he's, he's an October foal, so I think he's got a lot of maturing to do, um, and I thought we bought him at a, at a very nice price, so overall I'm very pleased. Not surprisingly, VAR was the sales leading sire by aggregate, with the Spring King's two yearlings grossing 1.76 million and averaging 880,000 rand. Second leading sire at Valdivy was the now deceased Tiger Ridge, whose eight yearlings offered all sold for a total of 1.28 million rand. Former champion sprinter Water Winter, who has really made a smart start to his stud career, was leading first crop sire, grossing just over 1 million rand. 
Phosphantine as agent topped the vendors list with three lots sold, fetching 1.69 million and averaging 563,000 Rand. With regard to venue, what improvements have you made this year? Now this year we didn't have a lunch like we did last year, so we've opened it up more so it's more accessible to everybody. We put a tent out on the veranda. Um, we've changed the rostrum to outside, which I think is a, is a big improvement and uh, I think it's been well received. Uh, the venue is great. I mean, I think the layout was better than last year, obviously. Um, gave, gave more people access to see the horses. And it's a super place. I just hope it um, gets stronger. Yeah, Vicky, I think it's a, it's a wonderful venue. It's a fantastic setup. I think it's done a wonderful job, the TVA. And uh, yeah, I'm very impressed. And, uh, you know, last year was, was fantastic. The hospitality has been great. And today, wonderful. We've had a, a fantastic time. I think the venue is beautiful. Um, it's really lovely being here, surrounded by the mountains. And that, uh, I thought, um, nice sources and definitely a buyer's market. I think this is a, a really a stunning venue. They've done a fantastic job here. Um, very scenic and very relaxed. So, um, you know, I think um, you'd be hard pressed to find uh, some some better sceneries than what we've had today. Oh, I mean, the venue is absolutely five stars. Brilliant. Uh, I mean, yeah, you have a look, the mountain range is beautiful. Today is the most amazing day. I'll tell you what, viewing them, the, the sweat is running down your back, so that was quite difficult. But um, look, uh, um, we're blessed to be in the Cape, and it's such a lovely venue. And, uh, I believe the figures are down from last year. I hope that doesn't frighten anybody, because I think the economy is in a bad way. And uh, hopefully next year it'll be stronger again, because it's just down the road from where I live, so it's, it's a pleasure to travel here. You know, I love this venue. It's very laid back. It's a relaxed atmosphere. It's a pity that more people didn't support the affair. And I think they missed out on a bit of fun because, you know, all the sales are different, but everyone lends itself to a different atmosphere. And I like this atmosphere. What are you looking forward to for next year's Valdivy sale? Now, next year, I think, you know, we'd like to ideally get about 200 horses on this side. Um, so we're considering various options, the date being one of them. Uh, but yeah, I think we, we really have to because it, it comes very early on in the year. So we, we're seriously considering switching the date. Your overall impression of the entire day? Oh, it was brilliant. I mean, it, the weather played, played ball. It was really, really, very nice. And I'd just like to thank all the, the buyers and vendors for supporting us. JPEG is rated A++ by Trunix. He's a dual Equius champion. He stands at Clava Stud and he's managed by John Freeman. Let's take a look at his profile. JPEG, the fine jury's now got out, he's charging home, but JPEG's gonna land the guineas. JPEG, pick six, desperately close, JPEG, pick six. JPEG kicking again, JPEG and Dargina, JPEG the outside, JPEG. JPEG is in front of recast, in third position, the Sir Slick, but JPEG wins the...
access the world's best sires at the Inglis 2016 Yearling Sale Series. Sires represented include Redoux Choice, Fastnet Rock, High Chaparral, Street Cry and Medaglia Doro. Join the most elite judges of the thoroughbred world at Inglis in 2016 as they select their next champion of the track. For more information, visit inglis.com.au. I'm sure you're all going to enjoy this next insert. I had the privilege of uh, having a meeting with Lise Grabanti last week in KZN. He's got a wonderful place, which is Piemonte Stud, uh, just behind Sommerfeld. And I thought I'd go there and have a look at a couple of horses. But what really intrigued me was his reptile facility. And uh, Michelle Wing took time to go and visit Lee to find out just what's happening at his Piemonte Stud out at Sommerfeld. Piemonte Stud is in the heart of racehorse country in KwaZulu-Natal. Named after the province of Piemonte in Italy, where the Scrabanti family home remains, this stud in Sommerfeld is both a family-owned and run business. Well, I think it's, uh, you know, between my son Dino and I, um, we are very hands-on. We're not only the boss of the place that um, might stand on a pedestal and supervise, we get down and get our hands dirty. I am a perfectionist in that I, I um, you know, my grooms and that know if I walk in and I see something untidy, um, you know, my good contracting language comes out and uh, everybody scatters. Well, my breeding philosophy is to try, um, ultimately, to be the best, um, but, you know, it's a hard act to follow. With, with all the um, prominent studs that we have that have been going for 50 plus years in this country. But you've got to start somewhere. We're not going to run before we walk, so we, we're busy walking. And um, I try and buy a lot of uh, brute mares with a pedigree. I've seen over the years, that's what does work. I've um, sort of earmarked three or four studs that I purchase from and, uh, and I follow them. I hope one day to, to breed the best, you know, we've, uh, the family, We've been fourth in the July, uh, we've been second and fourth in the Met. Hopefully I can breed somebody out there, um, a horse that can achieve that sort of status. And that to me would be the satisfaction. Uh, if I get that, I'd say, okay, I've now done it all. Lee is a man of both exciting and diverse interests, sporting impressive collections of cars, racing pigeons, koi and reptiles. Cars goes back to my dad's time and uh, cars have been, you know, it, it's something close to my heart. Uh, my dad raced. I still race at my uh, ripe young age. You know, my dad went into racing quite seriously. As a family, we were the only ones to um, have a Formula One team that actually competed with the best in the world. My dad sponsored uh, uh, Dave Charlton, who was a multiple South African champion. I also have a collection of cars. Uh, you know, there's about 40 or 50 cars here. And if all that is not enough, Lee competed and achieved provincial and national colours in both athletics and boxing. You know, my advice to anybody out there is that if you can have koi, have them because it's very therapeutic. I imported my first box of fish. I was persuaded to go and show them, which I did. But to cut a long story short, about three or four years later, and I've always had the philosophy, it's easy to buy something big, pay a lot of money for it. I don't, I buy something small. For me, it's a challenge. Grow it out, and uh, if, it, if it complies, show it. I was at a South African um, Koi Society show. The chairman there was making one of his um, speeches and he says, well, today a world record has been created. Um, and this is a world record at a national show. And then they called me up. Every fish that I'd entered 
were first, the others were second, and some third. It's 50 years that I've been racing pigeons, and you know, they are the thorough, I'm in the thoroughbred business, but they are the thoroughbred of the skies. But it was Lee's breathtaking collection of snakes and geckos that left me in awe. I have a bloke that works for me, John Chin, uh, reputedly the, the, the best in the country. Um, and I believe all is going to grab the best. With that, I bought his collection of snakes as well. And we've added on to this collection and we've bred snakes and geckos. The big thing in this, in this game is um, mutations, um, colours that no one else has got. The interest in reptiles, not only in this country but worldwide, is massive. Well, you know, my good mate down the road here, uh, Dennis Dreyer, will not go into the reptile room <laughs> or, or rooms with me. And some of the initial literature um, that we got was... Oh, no. <laughs> it's no wonder why. <laughs> Please don't tell Johan Malerba that there's a cellar full of wine. I had wine in my bottle as a baby and so did my kids. Uh, so, you know, we've, we've grown up with this and uh, not only the wine, we make salami, prosciutto, um, all the rest of it. And we try and keep those Italian traditions going, albeit I'm very South African. Piemonte is certainly not your average farm. From horses to fast cars, award-winning koi fish, racing pigeons and reptiles, it's certainly both diverse and unique. Perhaps one should not be surprised as it's infused with the passion, dedication and progressive thinking of a truly unique man, Lee Scribante. When I retired five or six years ago, I'm now doing what I wanted to do, um, albeit I love contracting. I, you know, from then it was four o'clock in the morning until uh, 10 o'clock at night, Saturday, Sunday, I still do that. Uh, nothing's changed. Um, and, you know, as my late dad said, work has never killed anybody. And he's quite right. Um, so with that, um, yeah, I am now living a dream, yes. Well, that's it for this week's show. Our next show will be on March the 13th. We will be taking a look at previews from the various drafts for our next sale. That's, of course, coming up in March at Durbanville Racecourse and it will be on Saturday the 19th and Sunday the 20th of March. I can't believe we're already there, Grant. Absolutely, the catalogues are already out and I think what's really important, Julie, this is the sale where the million dollar horse was purchased. He wasn't expensive. It's the value sale in terms of what everybody knows. You can go there, you can buy a horse for 20, 30, 50 grand. Illuminator cost 180 mm. grand and uh, pocketed the lion's share of the million dollar for uh, the smaller guys in racing, the smaller yard and obviously the young apprentice. What a story that turned out to be, but it started out at the March Yearling Sale. That's the place to be. Well, there you go, and that's all coming up in our next show, so we look forward to that. And of course, you were at the party. I was at Mark Bass's party, yes, and uh, Mark Bass had a wonderful birthday, and uh, he wanted to close the show with a message from himself about his birthday year. I'm excited, and I feel relaxed, and I'm ready to 